the way uh, Yubikey solves this through WebAuthn is that uh, the the model is based on the uh, the browser being a big component in this. The browser or the yeah. platform, I should say. It might be part of the operating system even. Where if you go to a website today in a regular browser, you know you have a server certificate typically if it's a TLS connection, uh, and the browser uses that to verify that the server is really who I am expecting to talk to. Now. Who am I expecting to talk to in a, in that situation is defined by what's the domain that's present in the URL bar. So you, it's still like prone to user error in that uh, I might mistake a zero for an O or yeah. something similar. Yeah. But what is shown in the URL bar matches the server because of the uh, certificate and that verification happens. So when you add the YubiKey component to that, the, the browser does this verification but it also takes that domain and sends it to the YubiKey. And the YubiKey knows uh, which credentials it has, like each credential is tied to one specific domain. So if you're being phished, uh, even if you as a human can't tell that that's a zero and, and not an O, yeah. uh, the YubiKey will get a domain name that just doesn't match the credential it's trying to use. So it will immediately reject it. All right. So that kind of protects you from those phishing based attacks. So I would say one of the easiest ways to get started is this WebAuthn protocol again. As long as you have a browser that supports it, which is all the major browsers nowadays, yeah. uh, you go to the website where you uh, want to add support for YubiKey. And if they do have support, then it's probably in your settings somewhere, you know, where you would typically go to change the password. There's probably a section for uh, adding like 2FA. Uh, they might support a few different protocols. They could have something that's app-based or maybe SMS-based. And if they have something that says security key or maybe it's called WebAuthn or maybe something else similar, uh, that's probably referring to this. Uh, the way it works is you, you press the button, uh, your browser will tell you to insert your YubiKey if you haven't already done it, or it won't say YubiKey, it'll say security key. Yeah. Uh, and then it'll start blinking and you touch the button. Depending on your setup, you might have a pin that you're using to protect it, in which case you might have to enter that. Uh, and, but then it's done. Okay. And then anytime you're logging in, uh, again, depending on the site settings, it, it might be that you only need to authenticate once every 30 days with a YubiKey. Um, or it might be every time, so that kind of depends. But again, just plug it in, tap the button, and you're done. There is a very rather uh, recent development where uh, the hackers are trying to fool people into kind of click on this authorized thing that pops up by simply spamming it. Yes, uh, this is something that we have been seeing. So I would say for for all of the OTP based protocols, uh, one of the biggest um, attacks that they don't protect against is phishing. So if if you get tricked to go to a website that you think is Facebook, but it's actually not, uh, they'll trick you for your username and password, and then they'll trick you for that one-time code as well. It's not something you're not expecting. Maybe more recent, uh, but a slightly different approach to that is uh, you have these push notification apps. They, they're a bit easier to use than OTPs, uh, but they they have that same flaw. So if you're tricked, you go to the website, you enter your username and password, and then you get the push notification to your phone and you accept that because you're trying to log in. And if you're not trying to log in, if you're just spammed with that enough times, you, you suddenly it happens when you're in a rush and you're not really paying attention and you might have pressed the wrong button by mistake. In some ways, I would say that these FIDO protocols are kind of the next evolution of that. So. Uh, the, the YubiKey brings that you don't have to have these clunky smart card readers. They're baked into the platforms in a different way. So you don't have to have a specific middleware and a specific backend. It's, it's open standards. It's built into the browsers. Uh, it's really bringing the security of smart card to the, the average user for regular sites, you know, logging into Facebook or Google or or GitHub or, or other sites like that. That seems kind of exactly what smart cards needed to be back in the day, because I remember you had special readers for them. You had to have software licensing and a lot of things, and it didn't really feel anything else than cumbersome. So with YubiKey done, I guess it's for everyone. Well, that's certainly the hope, and that's why we also have support for so many different protocols, because uh, if you're 
you know, if you're a small new company, then maybe it's not that difficult to just jump on the, the latest, most secure, best of breed type things. But if you're you know, an older company that's been around for a while, you have a large infrastructure, it's not that easy. You have a lot of older legacy systems that still need to work. Yeah, that, that OTP string was the only feature available when the YubiKey first launched. And today, the YubiKey can do a lot more. So we have we still have that functionality, but the YubiKey functions as a smart card uh, with uh, several different smart card applications. So it can work in standard enterprise setups. Uh, we have the newer uh, FIDO protocols, WebAuthn. Uh, that's a completely new standard that we, uh, together with others, developed to solve a lot of the problems that still exist with these OTP-based solutions. We have a few different models. I think in general, I would say that YubiKeys are really rugged. I've had a few of them on my keychain for yeah almost 10 years now, um, and I haven't had a problem. Due to the nature of the connectors, I think I'd say that USB-A is uh, more rugged than USB-C. Always using my mobile phone uh, as my main work tool. Uh, how should I use uh, YubiKey in a secure way? So I would use one of our YubiKeys that has support for NFC, which is a really nice user experience when you're on a mobile phone. You you can tap it. Uh, the WebAuthn protocols work uh, over NFC, so. Um, Anything that you're using that is uh, that is browser-based should kind of work the same way from your phone as it does from your uh, your your desktop. Since it's post-pandemic, uh, I work a lot from the company's laptop from home. Uh, how does that work? I, I connect by using VPN from my from my home, for example. So a lot of VPNs have support for some protocol that's that's uh, available on the YubiKey. Uh, and that is one of the nice features of the YubiKey is that you can move it between devices as you're using them. I would say, you know, as a convenience thing uh, for your laptop, I'm assuming you're, you guard that very well if it's a company laptop and you're not leaving it around. You could use one of our uh, our, our nano models, you can leave it basically plugged in all the time. You shouldn't do that if you're going to leave your <laughs> computer yeah. without uh, keeping an eye on it. But but as, as as long as you're careful about that, then it's it's really handy. Uh, you can you know put your laptop in your bag and it doesn't really stick out. And there's yeah, yeah. It, it's very convenient also.